Shall I start the session or shall I wait for some more time for others to join? Okay, let's start the session. If someone is joining, they'll join it. Uh, are you joined in Zoom also? Do you have a link? You have a link? Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you can join, uh, it would be better. I mean, uh, if anything is not clearly visible or something, you can still have a look at that also. Okay. Uh, I'll give you a minute. Uh, please join that. And let me know if my screen is visible and everything or not. Okay. You will still be getting a recording as well of this. Rakul, correct? Okay, Rakul. Okay. Fine. So my screen is visible, right? Okay, you can mute uh, there so that uh, there is no echo for you, two time disturbance. Okay, so welcome to cybersecurity uh, with ethical hacking class. And uh, this is your demo. Uh, once you feel comfortable with the demo and uh, the way we teach, how the classes be, and everything, you can ask me questions regarding anything in subject. Uh, I'll be answering it to you. You might be having some questions, some doubts. You can ask me anything. This demo is for making you people comfortable. If you are comfortable with demo class, every class will be like demo itself. Okay. So you can be comfortable during the whole course. So you can uh, comfortably learn everything and feel happy after the course. Okay. That we can guarantee. So you are for ethical hacking? Actually, I think it's cyber security. Yeah, it's cyber security. No, please take a seat. So let us start basically with my introduction and then uh, I'll ask you your introduction. Please, I'll show you something. You just address those. Once we complete this, we will discuss about how this course is going to be because this is a demo. I don't expect to start directly with some technical things and you. it will be a, a lot of burden to understand certain things. We will go a little slow because ultimately understanding by the student is more important than teaching 100 things. Okay, so whatever we teach should be clearly understood and replicated. Like uh, you have to do the repeat, repeat the same things and you should be confident enough in that. Okay, it, it does not matter, matter whether you learn 100% or not. Even if you learn 60-70%, if you can do everything, that is much more valuable than learning 100% and doing nothing. Okay, so we focus more on practical knowledge because that is what is required for jobs. Let's say you are applying for a job. Uh, nobody looks how much you know. Everybody will look at only how much you can do your skill. So that is how our training will be. Okay, let us start with my introduction. Myself, I'm Advait Kambam. Uh, I uh, am an electronics and communication engineering graduate. And I have been into this particular training uh, activity for more than five years. I've given like uh, hundreds of workshops and hundreds of trainings. Uh, I've taught like uh, some few thousands of students. I've been to multiple IITs as a trainer. I've given in IIT Hyderabad, Madras, a lot of places. I am a penetration tester as well. I test uh, security vulnerabilities and security postures of different companies, most likely uh, startup companies and some manufacturing industries, a lot of them. So this is a basic introduction about me. Okay. 
I want to know a little bit about you people as well. I want you people to address these six points. I hope the screen is clearly visible. So I want you people to address these six points. So I will know what exactly is your background. Based on this, I can actually decide if at all you are from a technical background, non-technical background, maybe you have some programming background, maybe not. Okay. Maybe some people might be from uh, chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, civil engineering. It can be anything. Cyber security welcomes everybody. Okay. You need not know anything before you come. But if I know whether you know something or not, I can actually make my course suitable for you people. Okay. For that reason, I want to know about you. Uh, you can address these six points and you can let me know. So I will have some good clarity about it. We'll start with you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Prashant. I'm from Hyderabad. And I've done my graduation in aeronautical engineering. Okay. And uh, right now, uh, I've been working in GS Labs as a SOC analyst. Okay. I've been for past one year. Okay. So mainly, I was uh, working as an uh, uh, analysis part in uh, hardware analysis, email analysis in part of Azure. And my, my tools were uh, Azure, uh, Cisco umbrella, Silence, and Secure. Okay. So I was uh, so about. Uh, uh, I've, I've been in this institute for mainly to uh, enhance my skills okay. and to know more skills about cybersecurity to carry my growth in the cybersecurity. Okay. And uh, I've been looking for some certifications as well. Uh, okay. So mainly in cybersecurity, there are many certifications like the C2 hardware, C9, and it's uh, CATIA plus security class. Mm -hmm. So I just want to know more about this uh, certification stuff. Hmm. Because in, in, in case of if we want to go in any other companies to increase my uh, salary basis also, we need the certifications and okay. with the uh, concept of understanding in cyber security. Correct. So mainly uh, I came to this company, uh for this part. Hmm. I think uh, Adil can help us to create my growth in this. I'll try my best. It would be an honor to actually make someone's life better. The sole reason I came into cybersecurity trainings is because there is a lot of lack of awareness in society. To create this particular thing itself, I came into trainings. So it's been a good journey. Maybe I do the same thing for you also. Let's see. Yes, what about you? My name is Harani Ramzan. I came from Shibuja. Okay. And Okay. 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 So you are from a non technical uh, background. You are a BCom uh, student. Okay. Fine. So when it comes to cyber security, as I already mentioned, cyber security doesn't matter what you are studying or what you have studied. If you have an IT background, yes, it would be a little beneficial, but it doesn't matter much because I personally have trained students from 9th class, 10th class, intermediate also, who doesn't know anything about computers. They still learned very well cybersecurity because when you start understanding cybersecurity in the correct mindset, it's one of the easiest subjects that you can focus on. You need not have any special requisites. There are few prerequisites also, which I will tell you now. Okay, so do we have anyone online? Okay, no. So there are certain prerequisites for hacking. For any subject to learn, we need some uh, basic uh, requirements. These, according to me, again, this is a purely personal opinion. Some people might differ, but these opinions are formed based out of few years of experience that I've got. Okay, please, you can complete that. So these opinions, they are formed after some years of experience. You are okay with my English? No problem, right? Okay. So whenever we are learning a new subject, we need certain requirements. These are the requirements for ethical hacking and cybersecurity. First thing is right mindset. Again, for learning cybersecurity, right mindset is not just one thing. It's the most important thing. Why? For example, you learn boxing. Okay, example. Let's take most of the classes. Our classes will be 85 to 90 percent practical. The rest 10, 15 percent is theory because without theory, we can't continue practicals. We have to learn some theory. That's why we will go. Otherwise, 85 to 90 percent of the class will be theory, uh, practical itself. And let's suppose 
you are a boxing student okay if you do boxing inside a ring in a competition or tournament you are called a champion if you do the same boxing on a street on the, some person you are beating up using same boxing skills what are you called are you called a champion or are you called a rowdy goon correct why is that it's the same skill you are basically beating some person if you do it in one place it's called a sport you will be awarded as champion winner medals trophies money everything if you do in the other place you are called a criminal you will be sent to jail it's the same skill what is the difference the place the permission and the back reason the intention why we are doing cyber security or specifically ethical hacking that we are talking of is also very dangerous subject like boxing okay when you want to learn boxing you learn it in a particular place you can't say that i want to practice boxing so i will beat you today you if you say that to someone what they will do they will run away to practice boxing what do we need we need one second guys just one second hello Yeah. So to practice boxing, we need a punching bag. We can't throw punches on people and learn it, right? In the same way, ethical hacking is a subject. If you do it with permission, it you will be called an ethical hacker. You will be given salaries. You can earn fame. You can be famous. There are a lot of ethical hackers who are very famous. They come on TV. Most people take interviews. But if you are doing the same ethical hacking, the same hacking, but unethically, that means without permission. you will be called a criminal police cases will be filed you have to pay uh, fines you have to go to jail all these things happen okay so the difference between both hackings is just the intentions whether you have permission or not and in the same way i told you for practicing boxing you need a punching bag you can't try on real people correct in the same way in ethical hacking also whenever we start practicing ethical hacking for our skills we can't directly do it on real websites in movies and in uh, news channels the whatever they show yes some of it is true but not everything it is not something like i type very fast on my keyboard within 2 minutes i will get firewall crack the nasa hack the money got accounted no it's not like that there is a lot of uh, things that go in the background we will study everything okay so there is a difference between reality and your expectation what you expect is what you see from movies and news channels that is not the reality so we will see what really the cyber security is or ethical hacking is okay there are very easy attacks which can be done in 2 seconds there are very hard attacks which will take years also to crack okay both of those things we will study how they are done what is the technology what is the technique that we use how uh, we can actually make utilize of it all these things so for this we should always remember we are learning a dangerous skill and we should have that responsibility to learn it and use it only for the good that is why i tell you to have a right mindset okay next we need to have access to knowledge this access to knowledge fortunately you have joined this training you are getting your knowledge from this particular platform this is one method of access there are hundreds of methods let's say you can read some books and get knowledge you can visit some uh, like uh, like uh, lectures like this one and get knowledge sometimes video lectures can give you sometimes some person can teach you something and you can learn sometimes google itself can you teach you a lot of things the access to knowledge can be from any place but you should have some access if without access if you just type i want to hack google in youtube or google are you going to get answers and you can hack it no so right kind of access is very important then we need to have availability of tools and platforms for example i i hope you both know cooking let's suppose you want to cook maggi you know maggi right you want to cook maggi what are the steps that we follow bring a maggi packet so will i eat it directly i have to cook it if i put the same packet directly on stove what will happen it will get burnt what should i do i have to take a bowl 
have to add some water, then open the packet and add contents and then boil. Now, what is that bowl? It's a tool that you are using. So you are stopping, you are avoiding the burning of the contents. You are putting the contents in a bowl, adding water and then boiling it. If you put the packet directly on the stove, everything will be burnt. Correct? So for, for performing anything, you need certain tools. You can't directly put a packet there and uh, expect it to be boom. You need a stove, you need a bowl, you need a cylinder, you need some pipe, you need some spoon, you need water. Correct? All these things are tools to cook Maggi. Okay, without tools, can we cook it? No. So for any action, even in cyber security, we need certain tools to perform some actions. Let's say you are hacking the website. You need certain tools. Let's say you are cracking some password. You need certain tools. You are cracking Wi-Fi. You, you need certain tools. Anything that happens, you need certain tools because our mind cannot hack directly. We use some tools and we use those things to crack the password or website or anything. Let's say you say you are a SOC analyst. Are you going to filter every packet on your own? You are using a tool called as Plunk, maybe, for example. That's a tool that we use. We use XDRs, we use EDRs. What are they? They are all tools. Correct? In the same way, we use a lot of tools here also. And what are platforms? Where do you cook, Maggie, if you want to cook? That's a tool. Where? What is the place that you cook? Do you cook it on road? No. Do you cook it in washrooms? No. Do you cook it in hall? No. You have a place specifically called as a kitchen. There you are going to cook it. Correct? Of course, you can cook it anywhere. Some people cook it on the street also, street Maggie. But the platform where you are choosing determines what kind of output you are getting. Correct? So, here also in cyber security, you can use any operating system like Windows also for hacking. But the platform that we will be choosing is actually Kali Linux. Kali Linux is actually an operating system. It's basically a kernel. Okay. It's an operating system that's made out of other Linux operating systems. We, it is created for the sole reason of cyber security, for security analysts itself. And we use that to attack or protect or a lot of things. Okay. We will study those. So, no, no, no. Kali Linux is an operating system. It's an operating system. And uh, if you want to see the logs also, we can able to see that in Kali, right? Yes, we can see logs also. It doesn't matter. We can see the logs even in uh, Windows also. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. So the point is, just like Windows, Linux is another operating system. Okay, Mac OS is another operating system which you see in Apple products. In the same way, Linux operating system, there are... Um, on average, you have three, four kinds of uh, operating systems in Linux. Something like Ubuntu, something like Debian, Fedora, all these things. Ba uh, back, uh, backtrack Linux, all these things. In these, using Debian Linux operating system, some people developed their own operating systems also. In our class also, we will see how to create our own Linux, our own operating system. We will see that. So what we are doing here is that we are actually uh, taking Debian and some people, there is one company called Offensive Security. There is one uh, Israeli computer scientist called as Mati Aharoni. He created an operating system called Linux and he developed it. Okay. We will be installing that for our platform and we will be trying a lot of attacks from that. There are other platforms also which we will use. So platforms are very important for us because just like how tools are important, where are the tools present? You said that we have to cook it on stove. Where is the stove? It is inside the kitchen. In the same way, where are the tools? It is inside the platform. So that platform we have to have. Then we need to have good amount of skills. Let's suppose we get all the knowledge. We have every theory in our mind. Can we do it in the first go? No. We need to have skills. Only when we have skills, we can actually showcase something. To get the skills, what we need to do? We should have Tons of practice. When I say tons of practice, it's literally tons of practice. You can't ever say this much practice is enough. Every day you have to have a new practice because I don't know how many of you know, there is a new product from Apple called as Apple Vision Pro. How many of you heard of it? These goggles which are uh, integrated with AI. You can do anything with that. Apple Vision Pro. You know that it has come out. But do you know that just one day after its release, an Indian hacker hacked it? 
they have developed it years of hard work they spent some billions of dollars on that product it is something like two thousand dollars or something two and a half three to three lakh rupees or more than that if you get it for india that much cost each product they, they uh, spent millions or billions of dollars on it and just after its release one day after its release someone hacked it you know about windows 11 windows 11 got hacked even before it was released it, it did not even come out as the product before that only some people hacked it so if hackers are this fast how much fast we as ethical hackers should be so we should constantly practice each and every day okay next finally we should also have some luck the reason i say luck is today if something is working tomorrow some, that same thing will not work every day there is a new challenge every day there is a new attack new scenario today if some uh, tactic is working tomorrow it will not work it might not work there is no guarantee if today one tool is working tomorrow if that is not working and we de uh, depend ourselves on the tool we are not going to be a good cyber security person. We need to understand the concept and customize ourselves for any tool. Okay. Today, if at all, um, let's suppose uh, uh, you want to come from, let's say, suppose one area to Amir Pet. Today, you are coming in Metro. Tomorrow, if Metro is not there. If you depend on Metro, you can never reach Amir Pet next time. There are other alternatives. Basically, the plan is to come here. Maybe if Metro is not working, what will you do? You will take an auto and come. You will take a, take a cab and come. You will come your own transport. If you are depending on a tool like Metro, you are going to stop your journey. Metro is not there. I can't do it. But if you are depending on the platform, that means to travel, that is your main agenda. Then you can take any tool like auto, like cab, like your own bike or anything. And then you can still travel. Today, we have hundreds of tools for each and every activity. Most people focus on one of the easiest tool or one of the most popular tool and they learn the concept. That's it. Tomorrow, if the tool is not available, they can't know anything about how to perform that activity. We will not be doing that. What we will be doing is for every activity that we do, we will be doing uh, dealing with at least two or three tools so that we understand what is the concept. And if the tool is not available tomorrow, we still are able to do whatever we are intended to. Okay. So this is how our classes will be. These are the prerequisites of hacking. I hope uh, everything is clear. Till now, if you have any questions in this, please ask me. Nothing. Let's see what is our syllabus. What are we going to cover? There are totally something like 30 modules, okay, uh, which we will be covering in uh, the duration of three months, approximately 10 hours uh, here and there, depending on how interested you are. Because if you're asking me more questions, you are actually grabbing more knowledge. I will take extra classes for you and I will cover it. If you're not asking any questions, maybe we can cover 10 hours before, 10 days before itself. Approximately, this will take three months. Okay. So depending on your interest, we can actually increase the syllabus, in increase the time. Okay. Now, basically, we are going to this orientation uh, thing, whatever I'm telling you, this demo class is also considered as orientation itself. What is this orientation? Let's suppose you want to go from Hyderabad to Bangalore and you are actually driving in the road of Chennai. Are you going to reach Bangalore? No, you will reach eventually, you will reach Chennai, correct? You need to be in the right direction first to uh, get to your destination. Here also when you are in cyber security, you should have one particular direction. What I have to do in the coming months, what I can expect, what I can learn. That orientation is what is this. Okay. This is not going to teach you anything. This is going to teach you about what you have to do to get to a destination that you have set as an expectation. Okay. That is something we have to learn. Then we will be covering something called effective note making and report writing. What is this? Basically, when you join a job, you will be having, uh, you will be in a technical position role and you'll be having a manager who might be an MBA who is not as technical as you are. For them, you need to give a report. You need to report them and give the reports and everything documentation. If that person is not technical, is he or she going to understand everything that you say? No. It should be easy for them also to understand. For that reason, what we do, we have crafted this particular topic, effective note making and report writing into our course, which tells you 
how you have to take notes or how you have to write reports so that it is easy for you to make anybody understand what you are telling. Okay. And when this is done, we will start with introduction to hacking and cyber security. For any subject, before we deep, uh, deep dive into the basic concepts, we see the introduction part. What is hacking? What is cyber security? What is the difference? Why we need to learn? Is there really a demand in the world where we can apply? All these things we will discuss. And then we will see some basic introduction to computers and programming. Uh, are you, uh, do you know any programming? JavaScript. You know JavaScript? Python, you know Python? Okay, what about you? Okay. So in our course, we will be covering a little bit of pro programming also. We will cover Python programming. In you might think whether uh, Python or uh, programming is necessary for cyber security. No, it is not compulsory, but yes, it is necessary. That means if you, even if you don't know programming, you can still become a good hacker. But if you know programming, you can become a great hacker. There is a difference between a good hacker and a great hacker. And that difference is programming. SQL, C. When I say programming, there is no specific language that is required for cybersecurity. In fact, you have to learn every language. But you need not be perfect in that. What you can do is learn the programming concepts of any language and apply the same thing for every language. We will not be coding anything. We will be using most of it from online itself, whatever scripts we do. Or when we use tools, we need to know what is happening in the background. If you don't know what is happening, then it will become a problem for us. I will show you certain tools which are actually provided as tools that can help you hack others. But if we use them, they will in fact hack us itself first. Okay. The problem is, they say, if you use my tool, let's say there is an XYZ tool. If you use XYZ tool, you can hack others. That is what they will say. But when you are using XYZ tool, you are also getting hacked and your information is sent to the owner of the tool. Now, how to find out which tool is hacking you? We can see the source code of the tool and then based on that, we can decide whether this tool is safe or not. Okay. I will tell you how to do that and all. For that reason, we need to know basic program, not expert level. We need to know basic program. That is what we will cover in our class itself. Need not worry. Even if you don't have any programming knowledge, we will cover it. Then we will see some overview of Linux operating system. How to, what exactly is Linux? Why we are using Linux? What is the difference between Linux and Windows? Okay. How to set up our Kali Linux, the lab setup process and everything. And then we will see the basics of social engineering attacks. When I say social engineering attacks, these attacks are basically performed on society. It's not hacking technology. It, ha it is hacking the minds of our targets. Let's say I send you an SMS and you click on the link and you log into some website or something, I get your username and password. I did not hack Facebook. I am hacking your mind so that you click on the link and you enter your username and password and I am getting it. These are called as social engineering attacks. So we will see how social engineering attacks happen. Mostly we will be covering phishing attacks. Sometimes we will be seeing uh, email spoofing attacks and email phishing attacks. Then we will be seeing some SMS hackings, how they perform. All these things we will cover. Then we will be seeing something called food printing and reconnaissance. From here, from 7 till 13, these are all continuously in sequence. We will we have one concept called as phases of hacking. Phases of hacking is basically the step-by-step -step process that we follow in our hacking process. Okay. So in this particular thing, what we will be doing is, First, we, I will discuss more on this and we deal with phases of hacking. Uh, we will cover all these things. These are the phases of hacking. Okay. Not completely. Uh, on an average scale, we can say these can be part of it. We will discuss more clearly about it. From 7 till 13, we will be seeing all these things in part of phases of hacking in the same sequence. Any questions? Okay. Okay. So this is about these topics. Food printing and reconnaissance. That means we are gathering information. It is called as information gathering phase. Then we will see some basics of networking because if we don't know how networks perform, how networks um, uh, are working, we can't perform network scanning. Okay, we need to know first what is a network, how network will work. Only then we can scan it. So we are going to some uh, learn some basics of networking. 
and then we are going to see some network scanning. Okay. Once this is done, we will see something called enumeration. Enumeration in these first three steps in uh, network scanning and uh, footprinting and recognizance, uh, all these things, we will gather a lot, lot of information. Whatever information that we have gathered, some of it might be useful, some of it might be useless. The classification of useful information and useless information along with getting more information from already collected information. This process is called as enumeration. We will perform this and study about it. Then we will see something called vulnerability assessment. There is one particular tool which we will cover in the course that is called as Nessus. Nessus Vulnerability Scanner. It's provided by a company called Tenable. We will see how to install that, how to set it up and how to perform scans. Okay, so it is a free tool that we will be using. Nessus, most of the vulnerability scanners that you get are paid versions. Cybersecurity is a very costly business. The tools that I told you, Nessus, it is having two paid versions also. There are total three things, Nessus Essentials, Nessus uh, Professional and Nessus Expert. Nessus Essentials is free. It has its own drawbacks also, but it is free. We will be using that. Nessus Professional, for one year, you have to pay 8 lakhs plus taxes, which is very costly, correct? And for Nessus, uh, Nessus Expert, you have to pay 12 lakhs plus taxes for one year. Are we in such a position where we can play that, that, uh, uh, like, uh, pay that much amount to get the tool? No. It is only possible for companies who constantly use it to, perform, to purchase those uh, tools and then give it to us. So we can't do it. That is why what we do, we choose the free versions and then we learn from it. It's the concept is same. It's just that some of the features are missing because it is free. Okay. Next. We will also be seeing some system hacking and introduction to malware. Till now, you might have just uh, learned a little bit about antivirus, how to install it in your system, maybe your laptop or your mobile phone. Correct? We will see for the first time how to create malware. Malware attacks are very common. How malware is created, how we can create our malware and how we can attack others and how we can hack systems. Okay. Either with malware or without malware, how we can do it, different types of attacks that we will be seeing in this class. And then we will be seeing something related to privilege escalation also. And uh, I'll explain more on this. Giving a brief description is also a little complicated here. I will explain it while the class is going on itself. Privilege escalation. Then we have something called sniffing attacks, which happen. So whenever you are connected to some Wi-Fi, some person might be connected to the same Wi-Fi and he might be or she might be sniffing on the com communications that you uh, are doing. Let's say you are uh, looking at YouTube. Okay. YouTube is actually protected. But for example, let's say YouTube is vulnerable to sniffing attack. Example. They can actually tell you what you, uh, video you are watching or maybe what you are searching on Google and everything. If they are vulnerable. We know HTTPS, uh, the, it is encrypted data. We can't actually sniff it. But there are certain protocols which we will be using to actually find out the sniffing attacks and we will learn on that. Okay, practically we will see all these things. Then we will study about some password crackings. When I say password crackings, we have multiple types. For example, cracking a password of a zip file. Cracking a password of a Windows machine, cracking a password of something like a Wi-Fi, cracking password of login pages. All these things come under password cracking. How different passwords are cracked? For one of it, we use brute force attack. For one of it, we use dictionary attack, also called as word list attack. For some, we use rainbow tables. For some, we use some other techniques, common passwords, SQL injection attacks. There are a lot of them. Okay. So what exactly can be used to crack passwords? And again, not everything can be had. Some of it, they are very secure. How we can find out whether it is vulnerable and how we can crack it. That is what we will study. And then we will see something about denial of service, DOS attack, something which is very popular. Let's say you go to any website during uh, results time, exam results. You go to the results page. The website says the server is down. You cannot access it. Please try later. Correct? Whenever you the results are released immediately. If you go, it will not be available because hundreds of people or thousands of people are looking at the website at the same time. This is a very natural phenomenon, but we can actually replicate that and attack a website also, making it not available for anybody in the world. 
So that is called denial of service. We will see how it is done. Next, introduction to web servers and web applications. How a website is created? What exactly are the components of it? All these things we will study. Because if we don't know how websites are created, are we going to hack it? No. Let's suppose there is a building, a glass building, and we want to hack it. That, that means we want to damage it. If it is made of glass, I can just throw a stone and the windows break. Correct? I can damage it. But what if the building is made up of concrete? It's a concrete building. If I throw a stone, is it going to get damaged? No. If I don't know what the building is made up of, can I attack it and get make it damaged? No. That is why when we are performing web application pen testing also, first we need to know what are the technologies that are used to build this website. How website is created. What are the key components? All these things we should understand. What is the difference between a web application and a web server? These things we have to learn. Once this is done, then we will start web application pen testing. Pen testing means basically hacking. But in corporate world, we don't world, we don't call it as hacking. Hacking means negative term in corporate world. We use, if you are a pen tester, if you are a hacker for any company, you will be called as a penetration tester or pen tester. So we perform something called web application pen testing. That is what we will be studying. Different kinds of uh, vulnerabilities, how we can hack them and all. Then we have some introduction to firewalls, anti-malware software. When I say anti-malware software, it's basically antivirus that we are talking about. Different kinds of antivirus, how they work. What, let's suppose we know what is a firewall. It will block requests. How it is blocking requests? We know a fire, antivirus. It is blocking viruses. How it is blocking viruses? We know what is a uh, honeypot. How it is working? That is very important. Okay. So these things will be covered here. Then we will see some wireless attacks. When I say wireless attacks, it's mostly about Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi. Bluetooth, again, we will cover theory concepts. Wi-Fi, we will literally hack one Wi-Fi and we will get the password. Okay, I will show you practically how to crack any Wi-Fi and how to get the password. Then we uh, study about malware analysis. Sorry, guys. So we will study something about malware analysis. If you remember, in the top, I told you, we will be learning how to create malware. Fine, we created malware. Someone else can also create. Let's suppose we download some file and we are having a doubt whether it is a malware or not. How to find out? Okay, this comes under malware analysis. As a cybersecurity professional, we need to know which file is a malware and which file is not. For that, we can never be 100% sure that it is a malware. We have to always make sure on a range of 0 to 100, how much percentage this can be malware. So how we can find out? By learning about malware analysis. In this again, we have two types. One is called a static analysis. The other one is called dynamic analysis. We will be studying both of them. And some part of reverse engineering is also required. But reverse engineering is not covered in our class. Because if we have to do reverse engineering, First, we need to know what is assembly code, machine code, and how to uh, actually read the code and everything. It itself will take three months for me to teach. Okay, so that is skip. But static and dynamic analysis, both of them we will be covering in our class. And then we will be seeing mobile application pen testing. Previously, we studied about web application pen testing. That means hacking websites. But these days, how many of you are visiting uh, websites? Mostly it is apps, correct? You have SBI website. But still you go to Yono SBI application and then you transfer money. Correct? We have a lot of applications which are equivalent to websites. That is why we don't visit websites. If you want to book a ticket to any, let's say from Hyderabad to some other place, you can go to redbus.com website also and book a ticket. But most of the people will go to Redbus application and then book. Why? Because it's very easy. For every service, we are getting an application. They might also be insecure, they might be vulnerable. So we need to test whether a web application is, uh, sorry, a mobile application is vulnerable or not. Okay, so we will be learning about mobile applications, how to test on them and all, and then we will understand. Then we will be seeing something called from 23, module 23 onwards, till something like uh, all the other topics that we are dealing. These are all theory concepts. 
Okay. Some of them we will see some practicals also, but most of them are theory because we need to know some theory. I told you, right? Uh, introduction to electronics in hacking. These days we are seeing a lot of smart homes. Everywhere you see Alexa, everywhere you see smart homes where you can control everything with voice. You can control it with remote uh, control. There are a lot of houses where you can control the speed of the fan with your mobile phone or some remote. How is that happening? You need not touch a regulator and turn it. You can actually control it with your mobile also. Sometimes. You can control lights with your mobile. You see these ads and all. In YouTube also, there are a lot of people who control mood lights and everything with Alexa or Amazon Fire Stick or something like that. How is it happening? Because there are they are using a lot of electronic components, chips inside it. So if at all there is a future for this, we need to learn how to hack that also. It's not possible for us to do practically because we don't have permission to do it. But we can still understand what are the important concepts in electronics and then remember them. So in future, whenever we get a chance, maybe we can get trained and we can hack it. So we will see some introduction to electronics in hacking. Then we will also see some introduction to communication and hacking. Let's suppose I have a remote. I have a uh, AC. I can control this particular AC with my remote. How is the button that I'm pressing sending some signal and understanding understand, uh, understood by the AC? There is some communication that is happening. If we know what how uh, that communication is working, what type of communication it is. Maybe then what we can do, we can actually hack into that communication channel. And if I press on 16 uh, degrees, it will actually increase. Uh, let's say if I click on minus, you know, like that means reducing the uh, temperature, it will increase. We can control it in that way. So if I can hack it, that's actually a dangerous thing, right? Every server room will have ACs. If some person is reducing the temperature to in, uh, decrease the heat in the server room, and if I hack it, they are decreasing the temperature, but instead it is increasing because they hacked it. What would happen? The server room would be much hotter and everything would be fried in some time. It is going to damage. We have to learn how to do that. I don't say you have to do it. You know, you should know how to do it because criminal hackers will do it. If you don't know how it is done, how are you going to protect? Correct? So that is where we will learn this. Not exactly this particular instance. We will see the theory of it, how it is done. Then we will see some cloud computing. Previously, we used to carry floppy disks, then CDs, then DVDs. Now, uh, later we got pen drives and memory cards. Do you have a pen drive on you now? Anybody is carrying a pen drive or memory card now? No. Now everything is stored in cloud. Google Drive, OneDrive, we store everything in cloud, correct? So if everything is being stored in cloud, even applications are being stored on cloud. Previously, we used to have separate servers and then provide. Now everybody is actually having uh, buying some cloud storage and storing everything in that, even applications, websites. So if everything is moving to cloud, we should be able to hack cloud also. So what exactly is a cloud? What are the different types of cloud applications that we have? How cloud is working, cloud technology, cloud computing that we will study in this cloud computing. Then we will also see some introduction to IT, IS, IOT and what, what are these? IT is basically information technology, you know about it. IS, information security. There are certain standards of information security. There are certain rules and regulations which we will follow. So we will study about that. And then we have IOT. Just now I told you, everything is turning into smart these days. Smart homes, smart cars, okay, smart glasses, all these things. Now, smart TVs, you can see TVs are also smart these days. They can connect to internet. If everything is be becoming smart, how are they becoming smart? Basically, when you say a smart TV, it can connect to internet. That is the main motto, correct? It can actually get any information from the internet and access. That is the main agenda. If it is connecting to the internet, it's a normal TV, but it has the ability to connect to internet. Then it is called an IoT device, Internet of Things device. This is a normal ceiling fan. The knob will be somewhere there. But instead, in between this, I add one electronic device which can connect to internet. So from my mobile phone, I can control the speed. I can turn it off, turn it on. What am I doing? A normal fan, which is a thing, is connected to internet to become internet of thing. Now I can control it with my mobile. I need not go there and turn it. This is about the IOT. IOT stands for internet of things. And OT. OT basically means operational technology. Let's say you go to a cement factory. 
or maybe something like a steel uh, plant or some power plant, new nuclear power plant or something. There, are you going to open the doors and close doors with your hands? No. You press a button, maybe you turn a lever, maybe you type something, code or something, you enter, then the doors will open or the doors will close. No human is going to open the doors with their hands. Why? There might be some hot cement, there might be some nuclear uh, uh, radiation or something. Nobody wants to go there, correct? It is controlled by a computer. You press a button, if the door is opening, the button is actually controlling the door, correct? Now, what if I can hack that? Remotely, without pressing a button, if I press something on my mobile or laptop, if the door is opening, is it dangerous or not? Correct? So, this is what we have to learn. Because most of the places, wherever there is, you think there is security, there will not be any security. Because you are not allowed into the nuclear power plant itself. You will be stopped 2-3 kilometers before itself. So, you cannot generally think of this particular thing. But what if there is an employee who has access till the main gate, but he doesn't know the passcode or anything for entering into this room, but he knows the Wi-Fi. Maybe if he can hack that and he can actually open it and then open the door. He can actually destroy the whole plant. Correct? These kind of things really happen in the world. There are a lot of countries who try to send people into other countries as employees undercover and they try to sabotage. This is called sabotaging. Okay. So they try to destroy nuclear power plants, maybe thermal power plants, hydroelectric power plants, water supply, irrigation supply, airports, all these things. These might be cybersecurity people also. They might come here as hackers. They might do something and go. We should be able to protect our networks, protect our infrastructure. So we need to know first how it happens. If you don't know how COVID is killing people, can you find a cure for COVID? First, you need to know how COVID is killing us. Then we can think of killing COVID. Correct? That is what we are learning. Then we will see something about cryptography and steganography. Again, this is going to be a concept which is mostly... Uh, theoretical that we will be covering. Uh, some practical also we will see. So, cryptography and steganography is mostly real, related to the encryption part of data to protect our data privacy. And steganography is part of cryptography itself where we learn how to hide our data. Let's say every day you open WhatsApp, you might get a good morning message. Correct? Some in one group, some people might send you good morning messages. You might get a good morning message. But in one message, generally a normal uh, photo should be how much uh, size, something like 20 KB, 1 MB, 2 MB maximum. But if a file, a good morning message is 300 MB, is that a normal photo? No. You are actually storing some data inside it and then sending it to others. We can do it. Okay. So how it is done? How secretly we can transfer the data? Because... When you go to a lot of uh, deep dive into the cybersecurity subject, specifically in the de Department of Defense, DRDU, ISRO, or any other cyber crime intelligence or this uh, particular department, you need to know a steganography because you need to communicate with a lot of people. Some people will communicate, you have to find out whether it is really a normal photo or something is there inside it. That is the reason we will study about steganography. Then we will see some privacy and anonymity. We are living in a digital world. First, we need to protect ourselves. We need to have our privacy. Then we can steal others' privacy. So how we can keep ourselves private, how we can actually protect ourselves, stay anonymous, that is what we will study in this one. Then, finally, we will see uh, AI is taking over every department. Chat GPT, you have already uh, used, I guess, uh, you know about Chat GPT. There are a lot of new things that are coming. This year alone, we have got a lot of new things. Last year, we got... Uh, uh, it's been two years, I think, uh, we got chat GPT. In these two years, one and a half, one, one and a half year, uh, we, we have seen a lot of growth for chat GPT. We are already using chat GPT 4, chat GPT 4.5 and everything. But uh, we are also having uh, new things like Sora, Gemini, Part. There are a lot of things that have come up. Why? Because AI has the capability to take over the whole domain. AI will take over cybersecurity also. But need not worry about our jobs because if we can use AI along with cybersecurity, your job is safe. If you know only cybersecurity without AI, then your job is in danger. Okay. So if something new is coming, I would always suggest you learn that thing along with what you are learning 
so they both complement each other how uh, you can use both together and your job is always safe need not worry about understood so we will study how ai is affecting cyber security whether how we can use ai in cyber security what is the role of ai in cyber security all these things we will study finally we will end the whole course with career guidance let us see what are the different job roles what are the salaries how would the interviews be regarding the certifications as you asked and what uh, what you can expect in a job what skills you should have how you can plan a particular career in any job all these things we will see in our career guidance thing and our course will come to an end this is not all if you still have any questions other than these you can still ask me i will be available for answering those as well okay so yes if you any uh, if anybody has any questions you can ask me any questions everything is clear okay to get a job in any company yes minimum graduation is uh, a minimum requirement it does not matter in which uh, field you have done your graduation you can do graduation anything that's not a problem any company they there are two kinds of companies one look at the percentage look at the cgpa graduation from which college certifications and then give a job they don't uh, think about skills there are second type of companies where they look at skills graduation is a must okay with uh, nobody is going to give a job to a 12th class uh, student correct so graduation is a must but still even if you don't have a graduation some companies are ready to give you a job what they look at is skills because we are dealing with the security of a company so nobody would like to give the security of a company to a person who don't have skills so even if you have a wrong graduation that means uh, something else okay or if you have less percentage no problem if you have skills you can showcase those skills you can easily get a job i don't say again every company will think in this way some companies are there which look at only skill, uh, certificates and uh, graduation percentage and everything but still there are certain companies because when i tell you this the reason is one of my student he completed his 10th class he joined my training i have provided him training for uh, around 5 months 6 months every day a long duration advanced training after his training he performed some scannings and uh, he found one vulnerability in one of the companies in hyderabad itself which is in gachiboli i guess he found the vulnerability those company people they were very shocked they were very happy and they offered him a job with some 4.8 lpd or something that means 40000 every month 4.8 or uh, 3.6 i'm not sure 30 or 40000 and he is a 10th class student he completed 10th class he joined i think uh, now he is still studying uh, 11th class it's been that 5 6 months that's it okay uh, last uh, december uh, uh, he completed the course with me he joined somewhere like uh, august or september completed the course in december in january he has written my exam uh, february or february i think uh, he has uh, got the job but his parents did not accept because he is still a student he didn't want to disturb uh, they didn't want to disturb his studies he rejected the offer uh, he is still having that job offer he can join that same company after his graduation after four years now does he has a graduation no he is still just 11th class does he have skills yes he proved his skills he got a job i don't again say every company will not think like that make sure you are applying for the right company if they look at skills you can easily get a job it doesn't matter whether you are a graduate or not whether uh, what subject you study you can easily get a job is that clear any other questions feel free this is not a blackboard teaching this is not something like your college i don't have your internal marks i'm not going to blackmail you i will cut your internal marks nothing like that no college uh, this thing. this is for your upskilling this is for your learning process so you can actually get a benefit out of it in your professional life okay i am teaching you something which i have already learned and you are learning it now okay i am not something like a professor of course i am a trainer but i am not a professor kind of a thing you uh, you need not worry if i talk something maybe he will cut my internal marks nothing like that okay ask me questions actually in fact i would say torture me with questions the more you ask questions the more i come prepared the more you get knowledge okay make sure you are uh, taking complete advantage of this and understanding it Yes, who have any questions? Actually, uh, in case of resume, then okay, what we have to keep in resume if we have completed these courses, we have to keep in a CV. 
or we have to keep it as a you are going to take a professional training from the couple group okay couple it skills on now this particular course it does not provide any certification of course they will provide certification from their end couple uh, training uh, certification but it is not any certification that is accepted by the world like ceh certified ethical hacker oscp these kind of certifications are completely different okay you purchase the course you purchase the exam voucher you write uh, understand the course write the exam and then get it ceh alone just for uh, exam and uh, course you have to pay 500 dollars somewhere like uh, now it is i think uh, more than that 750 dollars that means 80000 rupees plus taxes okay somewhere around 80000 rupees more now is it really necessary if you feel that yes i can spend this amount i want this please go for it i am also in support of it if you need any help i would also be doing it but i don't think for getting a job, certificates are more important. Skills is what is more important. You might be having 10 certificates, but if you don't have any skills, is it going to help you in the job? No. I personally have seen a lot of people who has done certificates. For example, there is one person who has his CEH certificate works under me. I give him work, he do it. Okay. The reason is he does not have skills. I don't have a CEH. Of course, I have done the CEH course, but I met with some accident. I had to undergo bed rest and all. I lost the time. Validity is done. Now, again, if I have to write the same thing, I can easily pass it. The point is, again, I have to take the course, which is 80,000 rupees. I thought, okay, I got knowledge. It is waste of money for me to spend 80,000 on a one certification. Again, how much am I earning with it? Hardly five, 6,000 rupees extra that I will get if I use that or 10,000 maximum in my salary. Is that really important? I don't think so. I left it. But still, I'm doing good for myself. There are a lot of people who did CEH or any other course, OSCP and other things, who are working for me. Point is, if you have skills, certificates will add to that. If you don't have skills, certificates are useless. So get the skills. And after getting skills, if you still have money, you want to do it. Because every course is very costly. OSCP, Offensive Security Certified Professional, it will cost you one and a half lakh rupees. And the exam is just for two days. Completely two days. You have to spend time. 48 hours is the exam. 24 hours for hacking. Then you will get some half an hour or one hour uh, break. Again, 24 hours for uh, report writing. No sleeping, nothing. You have to 24 hours continuously. 48 hours, you have to give time for it. And it is going to be like one and a half lakh rupees for the exam. If you fail that, again, you have to spend one and one and a half lakh and uh, write the exam. Is that really necessary? Yes. Sometimes if company is providing you money, they will spend on you. They ask you to do some course. Then I would suggest you do it. Otherwise, I don't think it is compulsory. But if you are interested, if you can pay for it, definitely do it. Now, basically, like for SC, for this one, for Microsoft, you have SC, 400 and SC, 200, right? Correct. There are a lot of things. Cyber security professionals, SOC analysis so, courses. And if you want for SC, 200 and SC, 400. Okay, this particular course, we are not providing any assistance for any certification, but still, please share me the content. Okay, uh, please share me the details of what course you are actually looking for directly. And uh, maybe after this uh, course is done or maybe out of the course, I can give you guidance on, of it. I can't completely help you with the exam. Uh, I will give you guidance of it, how to go. And if you have any questions and doubts, you can still ask me. I will be available, no problem. But uh, complete exam support is not provided here in this course. That is not good. Um, it doesn't mean you can't ask me out of syllabus questions. You can ask me, no problem. Because this is a cyber security course. Out of syllabus, there are a lot of things that will come in real life. So you can ask me any question. If you ask me, I will try my best to clear it and help you in any manner. So I will still be providing you with some guidance and guidelines. Uh, on how to crack the exam, what you have to prepare. Maybe I, if I have some resource, I'll be sharing it with you. Those kind of things I'll definitely be doing. And in case of recruitment, okay, there is the recruitment really happening or because I'm having already one year of experience. Okay. Okay. And uh, right now my job is in Chennai. Okay. So I just want, don't want to move to Chennai. I want to be in Hyderabad. Okay. So, uh, 
the recruitment process will be done here. I need to go to the uh, client's location to meet. I them. am not specifically sure of this recruitment process because I am a training consultant. So I provide technical training and there ends my job. So other things like placement, admission or anything, the couple group itself, they will handle it. So you, it would be better if you can ask them directly. They are the right person. If I say something also, if it is wrong, again, it will be wrong information. So I am not the right person to answer it. You can ask them. They are open to questions. They are very helpful in nature. So you can ask them. They will be helping you, guiding you through that. Yes. Anything related to the subject, technical, non-technical, anything related to subject, you can ask me. Related to subject is like in, in resume. Mm. Okay, um, if I was fresher, mm. okay, in the resume, what should I keep? Mm. That I have learned this much course. So I don't have any certificates. Okay, let me show you one particular thing. Okay, I think I have got some chat messages also. Okay. Okay. So let me just open my, uh, I'll, I'll show you any company when they are recruiting these days, it's not just your resume that is being looked at. It's also your LinkedIn profile. Yeah. LinkedIn. Okay. I'll show you my LinkedIn. Please look at it and try understand. Okay. What do I have here? Okay. This is my LinkedIn profile. You can just type my name Advait Kambam and uh, you will get, uh, let's say something like, you just type Advait Kambam and the first link that you get is my LinkedIn profile itself. You can open this and you can look at it. Okay. So this is my LinkedIn profile and here you can see anything that I do, I upload it here. I put it here. The reason I upload it here is it's a platform. It's a social media platform but not something like Instagram or Facebook. It's more like a professional platform for recruiters and also employees, employee and employer relationship. So here, for example, I've done one particular thing uh, for one manufacturing industry. This is a letter that I've got from them. It's actually a proof that tells us I have done something and I have some knowledge. Maybe you work for some kind of a company as a freelancer, get a letter from them, upload it here. Let's say I have actually uh, experience as a trainer in different IITs have done it. Okay. So you can see here, uh, let's say there are a lot of things like IIT, Hyderabad, IIT, Madras. There are a lot of places where I've taken classes. So this is IIT Hyderabad, as you can see, this is, uh, this is still IIT Hyderabad. Okay. This is also, this is IIT Bombay. I've given a lot of trainings. So whenever you, Say I have given, what is the proof? The photos, relevant photos that I take. For example, this is a photo where this is me. I am actually explaining something to one of the students and you can actually see this. So let's say when I'm actually taking a class, something would look like this. I'm taking a class and I'm explaining it. Uh, this is something I've taken for some school students and stuff. This is a training that I've taken in one of IITs. Okay. So when I do this, if they have photographs, be it documents, be it images, be it some certification, they would actually trust your profile much more. Look at the skill set, license and certification. You have to add how many certificates you have. It doesn't matter whether you really have it in cybersecurity or not. You have to add a lot of them. Um, let's say if you check here, I have something in, um, uh, I did something in biology, I added it. I did something in psychology, I added it. I did something in tally ERP9, okay, I added that. All these things, um, let's say the, this is some internship I've done in my college in BSNL, I added that. What does it signify? It signifies that I'm not idle-minded. I do something whenever I'm free. So these kind of things actually give you certain uh, value to your course, okay? A lot of subjects are like this. Okay, you can just uh, study about these. Next, you can also see something like the projects that I've done. Okay, I did not upload all the projects that I've done. The reason is uh, there are certain projects which I've done with NDA, non-disclosure agreement. I can't actually share them. So I have only added those projects which I did with my college. Okay, in future I'll be uploading some projects which I did on my own as well. So 
what projects you have done if they are related to cyber security add them and the skills you can see how many skills are related to cyber security OSINT, social engineering ethical hacking web application security network security heuristic analysis malware analysis okay information security ctf linux cyber security pen testing all these things most of them are actually related to cyber security some of some of them you can actually see the certifications based on how i say i have this skill some of them i have passed linkedin skill assessments linkedin provides some exams if you pass them they will say you are actually knowledgeable in this so as per your career growth you have so much knowledge in cyber security so i just want to understand how can everyone can grow in cyber security what is the main motto you keeping yourself attached to the world of cyber security constantly is one of the best methods you have to be in which level you are in your cyber security? Um, what do you mean by level? We have seven levels in cyber security, like uh, level three, level two. Level one is a basic SOC. Level two is okay. SOC and level you are speaking of you are speaking of SOC department. Is a, level three is a threat hunting. Level four. Is I understand. I understand. I got it. So you are speaking from a SOC department perspective. In cyber security, apart from SOC. Any other department wouldn't have any positions like this. L1, L2, L3, they are not there. Okay. In cyber security, there are certain things like red teaming, which is for attacking. For vulnerability, huh. we have red team and blue team. Yes. Red teaming is the attacking one, which we are learning. Our course is the red teaming course. Then we have something called blue teaming for defending, protecting. Then we have purple team, which is a combination of both red team and blue team. Some, so the people inside purple team know how to attack and also to defend. So these people actually bridge the gap between red teams and blue teams. Okay. Then we have SOC analysis. SOC analysis, though it is considered a separate department, it is part of blue team itself. Okay. It's for protection. So it's part of blue team itself. Okay. I'll, I'll just close it. Two minutes. We'll close the session. I'll uh, explain it to you once uh, this is done. Okay. So, okay guys. Thank you for attending today's session. Uh, let's continue. Uh, uh, okay, uh, they will be informing you the dates uh, when the first class will be. I think it's from tomorrow. We will be joining from then.